live shows for at least say a year or so. Um, the rest of you guys are trainees, kind of new to the business type thing. So it's going to be impossible for us to kind of cover everybody's spectrum. I found with seminars that if you focus on some of the more advanced guys, that newer guys can pick up a whole lot from the feedback, the critique, the questions, the scenarios, etc. Whereas if we focus a lot on like how to roll, there's a lot of people here who are just going to roll up and didn't really learn much today or they didn't get what I was hoping for out of this. So with the 10 who are, have been on shows and stuff, if you guys are up for it, I would really like to do one round of matches. Um, so we have five matches that we all get to watch. Uh, and I want you guys to be completely free in the matches. And the only thing I would ask is that you don't do any head drops, like no brain busters, no, uh, don't do anything that is an extra risk from the normal risks that we're already taking. By wrestling. Uh, we really just don't want to get more injuries happen, but just don't take any more high risks. Um, you're, you're pretty free for the matches. I'll let you guys pick out of the 10, I'll let you guys pick your opponents and then come forward with someone who's like, that's the one you're going to have the best match with, that's where you work. Uh, if you feel a real face, that's your call. Um, I want you guys to feel free, I want you to feel comfortable. And I'd like to kind of start with that. Like We can all do like a warm up if we need to together, but I'd really like to start with those matches before we really get into stuff. That way you're just you know, free of thought. You don't feel like, oh, I just heard this. I better apply this or whatever. I just want you guys to do what you do and you know, do it to the best of your ability. I like doing matches because I feel like scenarios come up naturally that we do not touch upon uh, as a class. And then once we finish that, we'll just kind of see where we're at time-wise. Um, there's a few, they're not drills, they're more scenarios that I like to kind of hit upon. Like it's just stuff, the last year for my career has been like crazy eye-opening. Um, I think it happens all the time when you're wrestling where you know, every year, two, three years, you kind of look back and you're like, oh man, I thought I knew what I was doing then, or I thought it was good, or I thought this, or I thought that. And you're like, I wish I knew now what I knew then. And this past year has been a complete eye-opener for myself where I'm just learning from the absolute best people in the business. Um, and it's every piece of the puzzle that they're teaching you and they're overloading you with and it's been great. So I'd like to kind of share some of those experiences, scenarios and stuff. Um, maybe see how they translate into what you guys are currently doing or what experiences you may have had and like see if you can build off of that. Um, but the matches would be to start have you been doing shows for like a year or so, or? Yeah, okay, so, so can the guys who have done matches just come up to work ringside? The guys who are ready to come on today. to assume, but would you guys want to work one another? Sure. Is that more <laughs> easier? <laughs> we do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that way we're not in this awkward thing of like, is it a guy doing that? Is it not a guy? You know, or whatever. So it could be like, like it could just be a straight up. Um, I'm, I'm just going off the injury, so okay. I, I can't ever say that he's a rat. Okay, oh, perfect. So we can put that. Right. Okay. Uh, who, who else wants to pair with you and who wants to do what? Very comfortable. Once heels, whose face is like, is there anybody more comfortable doing one than the other? You guys want to work each other? That works. Okay. For sure. Do you have a preference? Heel you know, face preference? No? Preference? Preference? Please be honest. If you do, I want to see you do what you're doing. She wants to be a heel, so I would change my face Or it's up to you. Or if you want to switch partners, that's fine too. Whatever, like whatever works best. There we go. Have you guys ever worked one one? No. Ever worked each other here and here? Nothing? Okay, so we're kind of in whatever. Uh, would you two like to pair up? Sure. Okay, good. And then who do we have left over? Anybody? Mm -hmm. okay. Does that work? Okay, cool. Um, so <coughs> why don't you, uh, 10, I guess we're at now. If, is it okay if they kind of go in the Yeah, pool? absolutely. Okay. 
yeah. if you guys step out, start putting your matches together. Um, I'm a big warm up guy. Um, if like if, if you want to be calling matches outside or warming up while other matches are happening, I'm okay with that. If you think it's better to sit in and watch the match and like hit whatever, like I'm not. Either way, nothing offends me. Um, so take like the next 15 minutes or so, whatever it takes to put together. I think like eight to 10 minute matches. Um, if you want to take it upon yourselves to ask others like what they're doing so that you're not doing the exact same match. If you want it to be a body part match, a jump start match, I don't care what you want it to be. You just make it your own, make it fun. Um, and then we'll go over them one by one. Does that work? Okay, so you guys want to start that up and the rest of us will stay in here until we're ready to do the match. What injury did you have? Uh, I broke my leg like a month and a half ago. In the ring? Or? Yeah. Oh. I, I, it was but my leg wouldn't fit down. Just from yeah. impact? Yeah, well, I hit like chest and like my legs came down and went and oh. broke my fibula. Did you have to get past it? No, it was just a boot. And it like broke like in the middle, so he's like, if you just stay off it, it'll be fine. I got, like, a, I got a couple more weeks before it's 100%. Uh, for the rest who are left here, have you got any of you guys have done matches or is this like more class or shows or both? A couple of shows. A couple of shows. Uh, I've done a couple of matches. I've done a few matches where I have an active manager. I just fly. So I also, yeah, I have training matches and then shows as well. A couple matches maybe a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. So we're all, we're all, and everybody has been in a ring or no? I, I'm not trained at all. I just, they told me I could sit up. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, again, like, I, we could hit ropes, we could do rolls and stuff. Um, I feel like anybody you guys get to do that with, you're going to probably get the same feedback from. Uh, so I'd rather kind of skip up, out on that stuff. Um, for the guys who are all here, though, um, we'll start it with just like, are there any topics, questions that you want to be happy about today? Anything that comes off the top of your head right now? Texting balls. 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 So I had this weird thought where uh, when I've been working in heel and like essentially I'm having a problem man the heat where I just like sometimes I feel like I need to be Greedier when I when giving heat, or just like I don't know if they're feed, like they need to feed more, I need to be more aggressive. But like I guess essentially I'm having a problem with like working a heel heat. Okay. Yeah. Are you speaking during it? Uh, I'm talking to the I'm like I'm talking to the guy during it. But I'm not like mm -hmm. yeah. that. That's like communication is one of the most helpful things. Uh, who you have been doing the whole show there? So communication for your heat is like one of the things that like it's it's weird how many people forget that like we're working together and it's okay it's okay for us to talk and, and be calm and not have it be like this jittery moment but like one of the easiest things like if, if we're putting the heat on here I have to, yeah, he's, he's kind of just dead selling me and it's like he's not going anywhere for me to come here it's totally okay for me to come down for me. You know, now there's movement and I, I don't have to smother him and I knew that's where I wanted him. And now if I wanted to hope for him, it's, it's you know, duck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that can happen with anything, you know, like there's so many times you have a guy and you're in the corner with them and you, you hit them, you hit them, you hit them, you're working it over and the ref backs you up. You come back and they're there. It's just like, well, okay, we just did this segment. Like we have, we can't give them this again because they just saw it, like, it's been repetitive and boring. So it's one of those things here where it could be ref back short. If I see he's just sitting there, I'll just say to the ref, hey, tell him to sell out of the corners, tell him to sell down. Okay. And now the ref can go do that, and while he's doing that, whatever, whatever your persona is, if it's a taunting persona, if your persona is just like a stalking persona, the ref can now come back. And that's like a huge part of, of in your heat, like just talk to guys. Like if you know, like, oh, I like, I like having guys down prone so I can drop a knee drop or whatever. Put him there. Don't wait for him to put himself there. 
And then like the other part of the heat is like making God, like you, it's tough, because as a heel, you want to force your baby face to fight for his life. As a baby face, your mentality should always be like, you're trying to sell up to your feet. Like that's your goal. You don't want to do that. So as the baby face, it's his job without constantly being piggy. If you guys don't know what a piggy is, but like, if I squeeze the air, you might just, you know, I might have him in a hold and I just give him like a, a thumb pulse squeeze. From reverse. But like without giving a baby face an Iggy all the time, it's it's on him to know like, all right, shit, I've been down for a bit. I better start fighting up. And I never want my baby face to be like I never want to pound him down when he's sitting down there. And I just work him down, work him down, work him down. I never want to hit a point where I back up. But my baby face is starting to get up to his feet. Like he's kind of just getting up on his own self. Like I want him to work his way up. So I'd rather, like, if he's kind of down here, oh, and I walk over and he gives me a kick to the gut, bang, you know, now he starts to kind of pull a little bit. And then I'm going to try to smother that pull, and he pops me away and pushes, punches, whatever. And, like, I want him working up at all times. Yeah. As the heel, bringing him back down. So if you get, like, it's, it's, it's so simple, because then when you're in there and you're doing it from a crowd or whatever, a lot of it gets lost. You're working a guy for the first time. You guys aren't comfortable with each other. That's another thing too, it's like, get, get comfortable at practice, work on your, your weaknesses and stuff, that's, that's totally acceptable. When you're doing shows and stuff, play to your strengths. If you know that you throw really good knees to the gut, you can throw a forearm to the back, but when you're not super comfortable with the punch to the face and, and the chop shift, well just stick with a couple things that you know you're comfortable with. Because when you're working with guys, and especially if it's first time and stuff, never want to have that tentative approach. Like, you can be thrown in the ring with, that's anyone, from, from a, a student to, you're in there with a guy like Kendrick, you're in there with a, t, a former TV star, you're in there with like, one of ROH's top talents, whatever it be. You never want to come off as like, oh, I'm, I'm being tentative or ginger with this guy, where like, the fans now are saying, like, man, I see him three, four months in a row, and he's killing guys. And now they're watching you face off with you know Adam Cole, and they're like, and you're being fragile with him. You don't want to, you don't want to hurt him. You don't want to offend him. You don't want to whatever it be. So that's why if you stick with the stuff you're really feeling like confident with and your strength, you now you don't have to worry about it too much. I mean, and don't worry about offending people. You know what I mean? Like if you have that opportunity where like I I, I kind of take like uh, I remember when Kevin made his debut and had the stuff with Cena that he did. If Kevin had come out and played the respect game to John, where it was like, ooh, I, maybe I shouldn't say this, or oh, is he going to be offended if I if I get in his face? Well, it wouldn't have been magic. But he, he, he treated John like he'd treat anybody, and he had confidence in his persona. It's not going to come overnight by any means. You have to have that, like, especially in the heat, in that early heat. Like, I think heat should be kind of ugly. Like, it doesn't have to be super pretty. He doesn't have, I, I'm very big on if I'm allowed to and I don't have to like give it to an agent or something, I won't call my heat. Like I hate calling my heat. Uh, I might say to the guy, hey, I like doing this knee thing here. So if there's a moment where you feel like you're selling up between the ropes, I'm probably going to do that. Or like maybe I, I do a, ne a neck breaker that's a little bit different. So hey, that might happen, but I, I'm not going to say to you, I'm going to hit you three times, you're going to go here, and then, then we're going to feed to a rope spot into an elbow. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. So like that heat, if you have the freedom there, let that be the part of your matches. You guys are going to call them together. You guys are going to say, okay, like we have a couple shine spots. Really work hard on the back end, figuring out how you want to piece that together because that's what matters the most. But that heat is where like, you really learn how to kind of just play on the fly, get comfortable. A lot of the cool parts of matches happen in the heat because if you don't have it called so much, you tend to be more attuned to like what's going on. What's the crowd doing? What noises are they making? Did somebody just say something? They kind of got a, got a reaction over here, and now maybe maybe you can utilize that. Maybe there's a guy in the front row who has a sign that somehow you can par parlay into your match, and like all of a sudden you start to create like experiences for the crowd. It's not just yay boo heel face, especially this independent like intimate scene. You want everybody to walk away from each match feeling like like they were a part of it. Because that's what they want. They want to be a part of it. And like, like if you don't let them be a part of it, and I think it's like a big part of why um, sometimes like crowds will try to hijack the show. If you're not including them and you're not allowing them to be a part of it, 
they might start going rogue on you. And they might start to try to entertain themselves. And oh, I'm going to do this chant over here. And oh, well, we're going to sing this song over here. And, and like, that's not a good sign. You know? And like some guys are, like I thought, um, SummerSlam was an amazing example when uh, Seth was facing uh, Finn. And the crowd was, was chanting about the title and stuff. And they just took their time. And they didn't, like, they didn't rush. They didn't get flustered. And they waited and waited and waited. By the time that back end kicked in, no crowd members were gapping the white title. They were into the match. And it was like, wow, like, they, those are a couple pros. They're on a big stage. Like, it just fins like first big, big match there. And they just were pros. Like, that's an example of it. But, like, on the independent setting, it's even more important at times because it's such a small, intimate feel. You want, you want to have moments in your match where you are not thinking. Where you don't have to say, what's the next spot? What's the next thing I'm doing? And that heat's the perfect time to do it. And it, it's couple important parts of it is babyface staying alive and, and fighting for himself. You feeling like, I don't care if I offend him. I don't care if, if <laughs> hit him a little hard. I'm, like that to me, I'm whatever. Safe. Super safe. Put it in the right spot. But don't, like you can't complain in this, this profession about being like snug or somebody. It's a contact sport. That's what it is. We're, we're falling freely on a very hard surface over and over. Like if, if you can handle that, but you can't handle somebody giving you like a good forearm to the chest that makes a noise, it, it doesn't that doesn't make sense. You know, so like you as the heel have to have to play that game with them. I like testing guys a lot, like I really do. It, it helped me over I say the last three to five years. I like to just see how people react to stuff. I might get it like I mean I got in there uh, I, I like using examples because I feel like they're the easiest. But like uh, I, when I finally had a shot to work with Joe for the first time, we got to do it at, at NXT. It was the first time together. But we, we kind of knew it. We knew each other, but like we never worked. But like, there was like a comfort there. Uh, not, not to say we're friends at the time, but there was a moment I remember three minutes in where I just kind of open hand slapped him. And in my mindset, it was people love when Joe was killer in our relationship. And I wanted, like, I, I don't know, I just wanted that. Like, I loved it. I was a huge fan of that. And I was like, well, I wonder if I hit him. <laughs> like, not, not in an unsafe manner, but I wonder if I hit him really hard. Like, I wonder what he's going to do. And I, I hit, it got a good reaction. And Joe's a pro man, and he just, they do it again. And the second the do it again hit, I was like, oh, this is going to we're in. We're all in. <laughs> Here we go. Because it wasn't like, and I didn't expect to be, oh, oh, don't do it back to me. No, no. Like, when it's my turn after that, I'm giving it to you. I'm not, like, I'm not taking it from you. I'm not, like, I'm shy on it. Here. Here's my body. Do what you, do what you please. You know, like, because you trust the person. And that's a, that's a big factor. Some stuff will slip. Some stuff will get out of hand. There's always mistakes. That's, that's just part of it. But, like, when you're in that heat, man, it's, it's that aggression, that ruthlessness, that will help and having spurts of it. Like a lot of times, I think guys get confused with gear change. I know I ramble some, but that's why I like questions because then I have to kind of go. Um, but like gear change, I think guys get confused with like, you can watch drills all the time. And uh, they'll say like, like say it's uh, we're working, I've had a heat on him for a bit, I have a hold on him, he fights back, he takes off, he ducks on him, he gets a sunset flip, I kick out, now I'm gonna get on him. And a lot of times it's like, all right, gear change, you're gonna, you're gonna really pick it up, you're gonna get aggressive. And a lot of times what you end up seeing is he just sunsetting me, maybe I hit him with an elbow and he bumps the elbow, you know, the bump bump, just go down. He bumps the elbow, he just goes get on himself up and stuff. Is that a gear change? That, that's sure, that's an example of it, but like, your job is to think of like 20 other examples. So that if you watch the match and you're like, oh, that keeps happening tonight, that doesn't have to be you and what your match was and how you handle yourself. So it's a, and that's, that's completely your job. That's your job at class. Uh, when you go to seminars, and there's, it's a drill-infused uh, seminar. It is always your job to watch everything. Like, okay, what, what is nobody doing? And what's a way I can gear change on him by doing something to him that no one else is doing? And it can be as simple as I hit that elbow and he's down. And the second he's down, I just, ah, ah, come on. I did nothing to him. I did nothing. I did physically minimal. You know, 
but it's just I've allowed the camera in my mind to have visual. His face is being squished. I'm over him strong. I come up for him, and there's this this visual. And that, that's all we're trying for. And it's just that moment of like, motherfucker, who do you think you are to try to beat me, try to pin me, try to slip one over on me? Again, can it be a mountain punch? Sure. But I always just look at it like, if I mountain punch him and I hit him eight times, I just punched him eight times. It's like, I must prefer my match to be in a, in, in a setting where he starts to fight back on me and stuff. Boom, boom, boom. He's going to go to shoot me off the rope. And when he goes to shoot me, I weave under. And that's my one fucking match. I prefer that. Because like, you're trying, everybody's got to figure out who they are. And for me, I'll strike one. That's, that's my go-to. But like what, what I learned with it is I'm not, I don't think people view me as always oh, a striker just because I strike or something. It's because like I really try. And I, I definitely make mistakes with it. I try to make every one of them mean something. You know? So I'd rather my, my gear changers or my filler moments I much prefer my filler moments to be just, just here. Like stuff that is is just they they can correlate with it, but they're not thinking like, oh, we killed him. Because when I kill him, I want to just do it once. And I want people to go, kill him. You know, I don't want him to have a waist on him. And it's it's elbow, 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 oh, and I'm free. I, I want it to be, I'm trying to be free. I'm trying to be free. I can't get to it. I can't get to it. I'll position his head where I want it. I'll break it, and then it's one. That's what I want. Like it just because suddenly it goes. Just, like you want that question always to be in their mind. Like, was that? Did he piss him up? Did he? The second you get that, the second you get the. Did we just, what, what just happened? You have it. You're not going to lose it. You have it for the rest of the match. That can be anywhere. That can be like. I was listening to uh, uh, Austin's podcast with the Revival, and Dawson he talked about how the, his favorite part of the match is a lockup. It was kind of funny because I was like, I'm a big lockup fan. We've never had that conversation. Uh, and it's like, again, it's one of those things. If the lockup is good and aggressive, uh, and, or, and, and it doesn't, like, good and aggressive, it doesn't have to be like where it's aggressive and you're fighting in the air and he's turning you. Like, again, yeah, that's a way to do it for sure, but it could also just be like you're aggressive and you're fucking here and you're here. And when we finally break from it, seen him do it. It's like, can you cut his hand? Because that, that's our job. Our job is to make you, like, we want to make the most seasoned pro say, is he hurt? Did he, did he do something? Did he offend him? You know? Because th that's that's what it is. The second we, uh, if we get that emotion right out the gate, now it's, well, what's he going to do to him now? And I have to keep that in my mind. They're looking to see what I do to him. So when we come back and we're playing or whatever, and we finally get to that point where maybe like the first strike is gonna happen, if I now come here and just kind of go like, give him one of those, do you? We've lost them, yeah. We've taken them off. But if that first strike is like, just like this, there's that big fucking whoa, and he moves. But they saw that the, they saw that grip, they saw that it was like a, a strike to kill. Now it's just like, all right, you, you, you want it again. You don't have to give it to them right away, but man, when he gets them. Motherfucker, like that's like that's our thing. Like, I like when I'm calling uh, matches. That I'm sure I'll hit this again, so I won't like, go on the full thing of it. I don't want to repeat it. All the other guys that are in with us, but like, uh, I call the back end. I care a lot about the back end. That's my biggest thing. Like, the first time working each other, we worked a bunch. I really want to focus on what's the finish going to be. How are we going to get there? What are our moments? Because that, that's what matters. We have a 15 minute match. We'll talk about the last five, go home, six, seven, eight, whatever it is. Uh, it was crazy when um, Cena worked, uh, AJ at SummerSlam, uh, I overheard, uh, not the ref in the ring, I overheard a ref in the back who had the headpiece on, you know? 
go, holy crap, they just got their go home in 18 minutes. And it was like, what? Like, what are we in store for? Because that's the good stuff. Like, and it was already a good match. And I'm like, holy hell, they're going to go all in for 18 minutes. Like, I, I was as, like, so excited we're back there, just like, I can't wait to see what they did. And it was amazing. I thought it was, I, I, it was so good. To me, it was like the match of the, of the show and the weekend. Um, but, okay, but for matches, we can call them like, so I, I like to focus on back end and getting that emotion and getting, trying to understand what we're going to do with the crowd. But then, like, once you piece your whole match, we finally have it, we've run through it, and we feel like, okay, we've got it. Walk away from each other. Like, I then, like, uh, I like to think through the match, and I like to kind of act through it as much as I can. So, as simple as it's like, all right, like, uh, I'm trying to think of just what I do, like, like, okay, it's, um, he kicks me in my leg, I sell that, he's going to run away, like, grab his tights, I'm going to grab his head, he's going to shoot me off, I'm going to come, I'm going to go over him, I'm going to go under him, I'm going to go through him, and I really like to, like, have that pacing of it, just because, like, it will help you just, when you're out there, it, it helps you, like, instinctively do something. Uh, it, it's, it's like anything that you learn in life, like, if you can hear it, if you can read it, if you can see it, can act it out. The more the more senses you can stimulate, the better you're going to be learning. If you're trying to learn a new language, you might get like one of those Rosetta Stones. You're hearing them say. You're looking at it. You're seeing a picture of a ball. You're hearing the word ball. You're looking, and now you're stimulating yourself. So we call our match. That's all verbal for the most part. Now I walk away and I'm going to start acting it out. You know, and maybe if you're it's your buddy, maybe not. Or acting it out together. Sometimes you don't know the guy. It's kind of weird. You know, if we're like. You don't want to step on their toes, maybe they're getting their gear on, maybe they have to do a promo. I like to do that. I like to act it out a little bit. And then while I'm acting it out, I'm trying to find pieces that, like, I'm, I'm trying to critique the match before it happened. So I'm trying to think, like, okay, well, he, he's going to kick me three times, and he's going to go to take off, but I'm going to grab his tights, I'm going to grab a head, and he's going to shoot me off. All right, so he kicked me three times, and I'm going to run. Well, do we need those kicks? Can he just kick me once? And if he just kicks me once, and then when he goes to take off, I grab the head. Can he go to shoot me off, but I hold on to it? And then I take him over, and now we have that moment. Now he works me up, and now he gets rid of me. So that there's this space between the time he kicked me in my leg, and I started to run. And he didn't kick me three times. He only kicked me one time. His kick meant more. I'm not going to sell him this. And I, like, that, that might be like advanced. That might be a lot. But like it's important. And like, I, like one of the guys who who helps a lot with that is uh, if you ever get to do a TV extra stuff and you get to sit in on Regal just yapping and talking about like anything, do it. Because this is, this is stuff that he does and it's amazing. It's just like, he goes even further than me because he's so much more experienced than me and he can. I just don't have that capability yet. But like, it's just so, you know, we've called our match and now I'm gonna start to do that. And now when we come back to it, it's gonna be, hey man, sit down, well, the three kicks and you go like, I'll just tell him, say to him, what about one kick? Go to shoot me off, I'll hold on. I don't have to tell him everything else. If I'm going to take him over and stuff, I don't have to tell him. I'll just take him over when I want to. Hey, let's slow it down here. We're going to work up. Like, just do that in the ring. Then once I get it down where it's like, okay, now this is our match, I'm going to commentate the match. And I think that's a really important piece. Uh, especially when you do TV, but even if you don't, when you're doing indies, that's how you separate yourself. Everybody's, we're, there's just so many athletes out there. There's so many really effing good wrestlers. You can do stuff I couldn't even imagine doing. You're probably not going to talk them all. Probably not going to compete with them all. If you're the dude who emotionally affects the crowd, who emotionally gets somebody to connect with you, that, that goes from top to bottom. Anyway, so if you call our match, now we're going to commentate it. And when I'm commentating, especially the back end, I'm trying really hard to think like, like okay, he's gonna do like an up and over into a backcracker, and the next spot is uh, I'm gonna pull myself up in the corner, and he's gonna come at me, and I'm gonna put an elbow up and come out and counter something, and it's like, think of how good do you think that backcracker is gonna look? And that backcracker is probably gonna look amazing. Now you gotta think how commentary is gonna look. And if commentary is gonna look. And now you're going to think of, well, your job is if they say that, 
how you have to sell it, how your facial has to be, how you, you have to give them that moment of maybe he is hurt. And it's like, so while well, pulling yourself up might be okay, and even putting up a desperate elbow might be okay, now think of what that next step is. Are you gonna start charging like a bat out of hell? Because if you ever hurt your back real bad, you can't really run. You just can't, the legs just won't do it for you. So like instead of you pulling up and you pop that fucking elbow, and maybe you have that moment where you go to run with you, and now you, then you touch something and you push him off, and then you get whatever. Again, and it's, it's so much crap to think through, that's when you do it. You do it before the match. Because when you're out there, you don't want to think about anything. You want it to just be in six. So if you can cover every base before the match starts, it makes a huge difference. So it's like, we call our match, we have our match. I try to physically go through the motion. I try to think of uh, through, like, did it didn't feel right? Did it really seem right to me? And you're going to make mistakes. And then that commentary part really helps get the story across. Like, is, what, are they, what story are they telling? Is it the arm? Is it the leg? Is it the back? Is it wearing them down? Are you guys good? We're ready. Cool. Do you know how the other guys are doing? Are they uh, I'll go check on Close it. So we'll hit, uh, yeah, five. We'll hit five matches. Uh, I, I'm going to have my, my phone. I, I take notes because I don't have a memory. So I'm going to take notes during matches. I just don't you guys think I'm like texting or something. Um, <clears throat> after each match, we'll talk about stuff in the match. And then, in the five matches, then kind of see where we're at, and then uh, we'll probably get into those different scenarios that over the last year. That we've um, do we have a ref for you guys? Yeah. Uh, He's yeah. going to be strength, right? This guy. Yeah. Uh, two matches are ready, three oh, of them need a few more minutes. So. Well, so we'll start matches now, then by the time they're all done, we'll be ready. Uh, so, <coughs> thank you for. So we'll shoot for uh, eight to ten minutes. Uh, we're not going to finish right now. Um, you all know, kind of place with the finisher again, like the angle finish, and we go off the camera. And I, I didn't know when or how to go off the camera thing would work. But I just sold it. And I, I didn't, refs would check on me, and I, I wasn't giving the ED to anybody. And there was no, I was going to squeeze anyone's hand to give them the I'm okay in case one person caught it. I, I played, I couldn't breathe. I think I cracked the rim. I might need your help. And I, I, I didn't want the refs to think I was okay. I wanted them to think that hurt me. This sucks. Because uh, they're my buddies too. Both both refs that walked me out with my buddies. So now now not only am I gonna I'm gonna touch on their emotion of genuinely we're, we're buddies. And they're like, oh, oh he, things are going his way and it just got fucking hurt. So now they're going to sell it different, you know, and we're going to bat, we're going to go slow, and a couple times I would just stop, because what would you do if you had I actually fractured a rib before, and I know what it feels like. A couple of times, just, just, you need it, you can't, you just can't keep walking all the time, you just got to have that moment on, on the knee, where, and it's not because, like, the pain shoots for the legs or anything, it's, just, it's a hard thing to explain, but you get that rib shot, just, cripples you, you know? So we did it. We did the whole thing. And the feedback was amazing. And it was just, again, it was like I cheated. I was like, but I did what you told me to do. But they hit every piece of it apart. It would have never been that if they had, hadn't cared enough to say, well, what, what, what's the first segment look like? What's the second segment? How do we give the fight back? Because like, we need a fighting spirit without me blowing a comeback on two guys. Because that doesn't help them, because they're the top tag team and they get the titles. And now I just whip their ass by myself. It doesn't work. I didn't whip anyone's ass. I simply climbed up to them and told them to whip my ass more. But by doing so, it got me over. You know, it's, it's like, so it's like it's, it's, it's this really, from the now I'm learning, that it's a very intricate, long process to figure out, like, what do you do as a baby face to get over? Figure out who your crowd is that, that you're going to pull in. And figure out how you're pulling them in. You know? And then, then you also got to play in the comp. There's some people who are going to like you no matter what. So you shouldn't focus nearly as much on them. Focus on the ones that are hard, hard for you to get Because if you can, if you already got the people here, they already like me. They're, they're just fans of mine. Whatever he does, I'm going to like it. But none of these people either know me or, or don't really care. But if I could just pull half of them, 
now I've just put myself up to two thirds of the crowd. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like you gotta, you know, so you gotta find them. How do I tug at their emotion? How do I get them to feel bad? Um, so that's like a very long winded answer to it. But it's all in, in the cell of stuff. And the rip kick too was like, I mean, we had, I, Sean Michaels coached me on how to sell um, kick to ribs to his preference. And it was just like, the cool, literally one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. But it was so simple too, and it made perfect sense because at first it was gonna be, you know, you take a kick to the rib, pro wrestler sell it, like you fucking kind of get yourself caught in the ropes, they push you out. We've seen that a hundred times, no problem. And he was like, well, what would happen if they kicked you in the rib? He was like, and they, they got your rib. And again, I had fractured ribs, so it was like, I definitely wouldn't do that. I definitely wouldn't be mobile. I was like, of course you wouldn't. And now, now we're playing and we're there, and he takes the kick and he shows me the face to the mat, hard cams there. And then the slow turn, so now the, the Roman cam here gets you in that real slow motion. And then like, I think I came up with an idea like that, like Dawson would put his feet like on their face. And at the time I was real sad because he always wears cowboy boots, always. And don't you think that I say any more sneakers. Cowboy boots, I just thought it would look cooler. It would have been a cool video. But anyways, uh, him put the boot in my face and then they push me out. So little stuff like that, it's like that as a baby face. Is always going to connect. Take that kick as a heel, get your own ass all tangled up, be a little bit of a goof with it, entertain people, sure. Don't entertain people as a baby face. So. Pull, pull at their heartstrings, you know? Watch Shawn Michaels' heel run. Watch Shawn Michaels' big baby face for China run. Two different people, two different selves. Shawn Michaels is a heel, he's bouncing all over the world. Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan is even more so. He's just doing it. He's doing it. He'll make Razor look like the best Razor could possibly look. Now Shawn Michaels is a baby face. He doesn't want Razor to look like the best Razor he could look. He wants him to look like a killer. He wants him to look like a badass dude who's about to hurt him. That's a different thing. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so it's, it, it, it's, I wish I caught on to it earlier, and I didn't. And I have actually have gone back recently uh, in a really good match to watch, and I'm, I'm never good with years or timelines. I think it's 2002, but I might be way off. It was a SummerSlam. It was Hunter versus uh, for Sean. Uh, it was a, some sort of no holds bar stipulation, whatever that would be. Uh, and I think they actually have a thing on the network now where you can even see the feud and how it built to that match. But I went back and watched <coughs> that match. I've gone back and watched a lot of like Hunter and Sean stuff and, and other guys who maybe I just didn't. I didn't look for the right things the first time through, and uh, it was just amazing to see like how in that match, maybe face Sean fired up, how he sold, how his face changed from moment to moment, uh, and how Hunter responded to it, how his heat looked. Uh, again, with it being like a anything goals match, well, watch that match and watch like watch the isolated lower back heat because Michaels is coming back from the back surgery. The isolated lower back heat that Hunter puts on and the simplicity of it and brutality of it. Like he, he sets up a chair seated normal and just backbreakers him on it or just bends right through. We're like us, we're probably going to think, oh, what are we going to do this cool brain buster spot? It's going to look amazing. But it didn't have to. It just had to look like, like he hurt him. And Sean sell it. And now the chair is, is flat. Hunter kicks it and kicks it to get it like flattened out even more. And, Sidewalk slams him on it, and, Hunter, and Sean sells it with this just like, like look of like, oh my, he just had surgery. No, like you, you can't do that to him. Whereas if he was heel, Sean, he'd take that bump and, and be like squirming all around, and you know, and bouncing like a, a crazy man, and taking the buckle up, and uh, but it wasn't that. It was different than that. Uh, so it, it's, that's a great thing to watch, to look out for with people. Like you can do it. Like, I wish we could do it with Steamboat. I wish Steamboat had a heel run at some point. I, I would love to see how he switched up that. Uh, you can do it with Macho Man. You can watch Macho heel face and see the differences there. Uh, Brett, you can even do it with. Like when Brett did the, the feud with Austin, and his heel Brett versus Austin. Uh, and, and then you watch like something that they might run in Canada where it's babyface Brett. And like they are so seasoned and they're so smart that they understood, like. Facial expression has to change a little bit. The way I sell this can't be quite the same. Because so those are like they're subtle ways that you you now get away from the whole idea of like, well, do I pander or do I not? Do I rah rah or do I not? Or like, 
Is it because of the way I walk? Is it my entrance? What do I got to do to get these people to share for me? All that kind of goes out the window. It's like, you're going to work and get their, pull on their, their, their emotions by making them feel like this is that real when you're getting your butt to the middle. I know it's a very long history, but that's just stuff that I've been like really playing with. Anything else? Or let's go to the next match and we'll kind of go from there. Oh, yeah. so for a, a, a 10 count or a count on the outside, sometimes I was told to just uh, you know, ask them, get back here, tell them, get back in the ring, get back in the ring, to kind of extend. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that uh, you find is really helpful to you uh, if you need more time on the outside? Yeah, like I, I, I'm, I'm very inclusive with my ref when calling my matches. I'm not calling, but before the match happens. I like, as far as telling, hey, we actually, it would help us if you actually came outside during this part of it. Uh, but that, yeah, that, that's like just per scenario, per person. You can just ask them to. Like, I mean, I, I would assume you're going up to every match and just, what's the finish? Is there anything I need to know? And like, you can expand upon that because that, is there anything I need to know really leaves it to free will for the person. <laughs> but you, if you kind of, are there any count out things? Are, are there any uh, fish out of water spots? Are there, is there any ref distraction? Anything like, you can kind of, nothing, you know, and then maybe that will make them go, oh yeah, yeah, well, there's this one thing. Um, so it's just per person, just asking them. Here you didn't, uh, did, did you come out? You didn't come out, right? No, yeah, I didn't think you had to either. Like I think if she, if she took it to the next level, it would have probably called for you to, where it was like you were checking out for her welfare type of thing. But she really didn't, like she did the stomp thing, and then the second she picked her up, there was that counter, and like, you're obviously not gonna come out to yell at the baby today, right? So, well, yeah, I thought, I thought you played well. Uh, well. But yeah, just ask, ask the whoever's working. Because every wrestler definitely has preferences, I'm sure. Anything else for us that comes up? What tips do you have for Like say, okay, like like you said, you're you're comfortable with being a heel, right? Mm -hmm. So what if they told you to just be a face with, you know? Like, well, that's where I'm at right now. Well, no, I'm not. Yeah, of course. But what I'm saying is like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I know you're a face right now, but um, what I'm saying is like, what tips would you have to advise someone if they didn't know how to be? I think one of the fr like like so for any any booking that you have, you gotta treat it like I mean you're you're doing a job for a promoter. Like so, it, if there's ever that question, or you just ask, them, like, wh what do you see this match being? Like, what what do you what what's what are we trying to get out of this? Because you, you're first on the card, you're third, you're fifth, you're before an admission, you're after an admission, and and there's and everyone has different views. Some promoters want that first match. Hot fire, 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 fire. And other promoters want for oh, we want like a little entertaining match for the first one. We want minimal action and bumps. We want our characters to play versus each other. You just have you ask them, you know, what's your vision for this? Especially if they're, if you're unclear. Some most times you're clear, but if you're unclear, just what do you want from this? And then and or like if you're debuting, what what do you see? Like what role do you see me playing for the next three months? Because if the role is that you're going to be in a feud eventually going for a title, you have to carry yourself in a different manner than if it's like, oh, you know, we don't really have anything right now. But just try to get yourself over, try to get a connection with the crowd. That's different than, hey, you're specifically going to have this title thing coming. But then you have to take yourself to some extent uh, more serious and more credible because you know, even though that this match isn't the one, a couple months from now, they're going to see me go for that title. And I, they, they can't, they, they have to, believe that I, I deserve it and I should be there. You just ask them, you're like, and if, if they're putting you in a baby face role and you're really not comfortable with it, it's like, again, it's like, what, what do you see, like, in, in asking your heel too, that would help. Like, what type of heel are you? What, what, like, what do you like? What do you like your baby face to do? Because if you're, if you're in a process where you're just trying to find yourself as a baby face, or as anything, as any character, wrestler, and you're with a little bit more of an experienced person, hey, what, what do you like? for me to do when I'm selling and feeding for you? Is, does it help you if I put myself somewhere? Well, yeah, I got this corner thing I do, or I got this thing where if you're laying on the apron or whatever. And that now it, you're, it, it's easy, because you're making sure that he's happy with the baby face he has in there. And, and it's giving you stuff and material. 
Because it said, I mean, without going to him and going, hey man, I'm not comfortable being a baby face. I have no idea what to do tonight. So, uh, any tips? You're coming up to him and you're just like, hey, well, how can I make your job easier tonight? Like, what, 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 should, I, should I feed a certain way? Do you, see, do you have any like, character ideas that we can maybe, you know, moments that you want to create? And then all of a sudden, it changes the conversation of how you call your match. It switches it from like, okay, well, what spot are you going to do? All right, well, then I'll do this. And then, okay, your turn. I hate when people call matches with me. And it's like, all right, so, all right, I did this, what are you going to do next? I hate the <coughs> nuts. It's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I have, like, I like it like, hey, I do these three or four things. I do these three or four things. Sometimes maybe it's just that and you walk away. And now I think, like, like how could I play it for that? What Congress do I have? He's probably doing the same. Come back to shop. Hey, I got a couple ideas. Oh, I got a couple ideas. Do those weave together. Throw them all at the wall. Take out eight of them because they suck. They don't fit this match. They're great ideas. They just don't fit the structure of this map. Rip them down. So it's like, it's, that's just the, the conversation part. And then when you get character stuff, like, it's, it's great because it changes how you call your match. It's like, what, what story, what emotion are we trying to get from this? And then you start to think less than just like a spot to create it. It's just like, how, how do we pull that? Does that spot, as cool as it is, with the cool strike exchange, the super kick from the knee and all that, does that get them angry? Because we want them angry right now. Does that get them angry? No. That is not the spot we're doing. Let's figure out how to get the emotion we want. And then you, it, it changes how you call matches. It changes how you perform. It changes everything. It, it really does. So it's like, I don't know, Like I think that's like a roundabout way to answer it, but it's just ask the promoter what they want. Ask your opponent what they're thinking. Uh, and, and don't be scared to fail and to, to do stuff, oh, that didn't work. I'm just trying to learn how to be babyface. I've had a couple of live events for NXT where I was like, that was a flop. Like, you know, I knew. I, I came back through career and knowing, like, I didn't, I didn't have a good match. You know, maybe it was a fine match, but by my standards, it wasn't good. And it was just like, but you know, it's okay. I slept at night, totally fine. I didn't, I didn't have to go get a bunch of drinks. I didn't have to eat fatty desserts and stuff. And I just lived my life. I left and said, oh, a couple misses today. Right. Keep this in mind. Remember, remember the feeling, remember why. I recently had a, a, a bad experience working somebody that, that plays up like a, a giant gimmick or a, like, like an undertaker, and they were no-selling everything. And it was a woman, and I didn't want to like give her a receipt too hard or anything like that. And like, what would be your advice in that situation? Because was it one of those things going in that you knew this was like their shtick? Like uh, when, when calling it, was it like, I'm I'm gonna no sell, no sell, no sell, no sell. Okay, what are we leading to type of thing? You know what I mean? It was just it's just one of those like old like good old wrestlers that's like. Yeah, it'll be fine. Just go after me on this, and like, you know, okay, yeah, I'll do your spots, but botched every one of my offensive spots. No sold everything I, I gave to her, and then rushed through the match. With Did it feel like? Because the botch is whatever to me. It's kind of like, especially when you do lucha libre stuff. Some people just can't do that well. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's a difference between I'm not selling for this kid because f him, or I suck at selling. It was. She, she, if I'm being honest, she was a terrible wrestler, and she and she she that didn't want. That might be your answer, though. She didn't want to go off her feet, but but how can I still make myself look good in that situation? Because don't I have, her, don't do stuff. You know what I mean? Don't waste your shit on it. Like you're hitting someone, and they're not selling it, and, and it's because they're just not good, and you're not in a position where it makes sense for you to ground them down. If if, if that was an option, that would be the option. I'm gonna ground this fucker down, I'm gonna work a hold. Cause hey, at least I'll work my ass off with this hold and I don't have to worry about them shitting all over all the stuff I'm doing. But like if it's clearly they're not leaving their feet, this is a thing. What's the point of continuously throwing stuff like that so they can do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, could, you could change the matchup. Does, does the matchup <coughs> turn into more of a comedy thing? Sure, why not? At least when you're doing comedy, you ain't, you ain't Putting like your, your, you're not putting your work, your integrity of your work in jeopardy. You know, if, if 
you're just standing there like a, a dickwad and you don't want to bump and sell and do anything for me, and there's, you can fix it in the back, before and after. It's hard to fix it in the rain. I just, I'm just not going to hit him. I'm not going to throw four forearms at him and let him continuously hulk up on me. I'll throw one or two or three, and when I, when I say to him, hey, hey, sell a little bit, I'll definitely communicate. Sell a little bit, sell a little bit, but when, there's a point where you realize, sell a little bit's not working. This isn't gonna, this isn't helping me. I'm gonna take the count out on this one. Because <laughs> it's, it's not unprofessional. You're not wheeling on someone. Because I would, I would, I would personally still be uncertain. Uh, maybe this person just sucks. I'm not gonna wheel on someone because it's not like, that's stupid. It's not what this is for, you know? But it's like, if you're getting the impression that you can't, <coughs> nothing I can do is gonna make me look good scenario. Maybe you try a little comedy and if they're, if they're black, you know, like a stoic face in that, it's like, there's not, you don't have to go to the back and complain or anything. The motor says, what happened? I don't know. Yeah, I <laughs> I'm not kidding. I've done that. I've done that at a very high level. I came to the back after a match. Not the count on thing. I came to the match. Uh, I did a submission spot. And I couldn't get my submission on the first time. <coughs> couldn't do it. And it was very awkward and ugly and the tap it was just real shitty. And I went to the back and they said, What happened in the submission? I knew what happened. They wouldn't give me their arm for it. I knew. I said, I don't know. Not like, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know what happened? I don't know. You couldn't get it. <laughs> you couldn't get the arm? The submission? So, like, <laughs> I, I walked away from that like yeah, I did it because I made mistakes prior and I learned from those mistakes and it was the best way I could have ever handled it. They do. They know. They're not stupid. If you did that with somebody you for one came back and they were like, they might be pissed at first. It's not what they want in the match. They're riding off emotions and stress and stuff. What the fuck was that on? Jesus Christ, they're gonna, they're gonna calm down, they're gonna think it through, they maybe watch back the stuff, or maybe a couple of the people who have some common sense are gonna get in the air and get, what did you want them to do? What, 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 what would have you done? What, what, what did you want them to do? You put them in the ring with someone who didn't want to sell for them, like, well, if you're gonna be mad at anyone, you gotta think it, you know? You don't have, because you don't have to, it doesn't have to change your life or your career. All right, that, that Friday night's over. Done. Yeah, I, I didn't say anything in the back because it was already over with, you yeah. know, and it was just kind of like a whatever yeah. fuck you. The only people you want to give feedback and advice to is some of the people that want to learn and are open to it and, and they care. You know, that's not a person you give advice from. You know, you just carry on. You know, you go your way, I'll go my We don't all have to be friends. I, I have very few in this business that are friends. Tons of acquaintances and stuff. Quite a few people I, I don't care for in particular. It's not because like every time we see each other, it's, uh, uh, no, I just don't care for them, you know. And I just don't associate. I don't. If they're in that circle. I don't go to it. I don't put myself in their presence and and, and let myself rise about how much I don't like them. I just don't. Fuck off, man. That's your life. This is my life. And that's not like it, you don't. That's not. Don't even stress over. It. Have that match, whatever. Even worst case scenario. That person's in with the promoter there, and you don't work for that company. Fucking cares. There's so many companies. There's so many opportunities. There's so many opponents. Like everybody knows when you're around a while, and then they're around a while. Everybody knows who the problem is. There's no hiding the bad egg, the bad attitude. If you continuously have issues at all these different places, you might be the problem. But you had this one instance. <coughs> Most likely you're going to get benefits without them. You know I mean? That's all it is. I mean, and then if you work them again, that's when the conversation comes. It's like, okay, what are we doing? Then? Like, and, and when you call the match, it becomes more of like a, a very particular thing. Like, all right, what's the cell going to be? Like, I've I've worked with some people who are, are greener and like to, in a nice manner, was like, this is how I would like you to sell this. You know. Uh, where I just said, what do you, how do you think you want to sell this? And then, because I, I want to know, I want to know where they're at. I want to know 
if they if they get it, you know, and if they don't get it, then I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to talk to them about how I want it to be done. And if I feel like, okay, they're getting it, then yeah, we'll do it. But if not, they won't. So the next time you work that person, you, you start to, you're not being a dick, but you're being like a, be completely full. Like, that's a huge part of this. Like, so many fake, it's not, and there's not, there's not so many fake people. There are fake people. There's, there's some, you know? But it's like, be full. If you're a good person, and you're you're not out for selfish man, you're, you're, you want the match to be good, you want to have a fun time, then you don't have to like sugarcoat and worry and walk on glass and all that stuff. You don't have to. Just forward. Hey, like how would you, and if, if you're, you're getting a bad vibe, are you going to sell for me? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Like are, are you, do you plan, when I hit the ends of the earth, do you plan to sell? Are you going to stumble? Are you going to drop to a knee? When am I going to get you to a knee in this match? And when am I going to bump you to Because otherwise, what are we building? If it's not a three minute squash, if you're not going to Braun Strowman, <laughs> what are we? And even that, that's a long term goal. I killed, I killed, I killed, I killed, I killed. Now this first dude got me off my feet. We use seven people for that one person to get over. Totally fine. Usually not so much for the It doesn't, we don't have weekly teams, you know? So it's just like, what what in this match? In the Indies, we're building most of the time a match. We're not building a program. Sometimes, most of the time it's just a match. What's the story in this match? If I'm going to hit you with all this stuff, I eventually get you off your feet, yeah? With what? What gets you to your knee? What teases you coming off your feet? Because it's like you, you force that person into the position of like, it's, it's almost like they have to, they have to come to the realization that I'm either a piece of shit or I guess he's right and I have to give him answers to this and maybe, maybe I'm thinking of this the wrong way. And maybe I should, maybe it does make sense for me to go to me and to spill through the ropes but land on my feet so I'm still out. And then for me to take him, totally fine, you don't protect yourself, great, it's fine. But like that's but that's like the next step for you if you work that person again. First time, whatever. You know, like who cares? You forget about it. Don't even like don't let it linger and be a <coughs> like a confidence swayer for you. You, you worked with a dickhead, you know, in, in a in a business that you cannot succeed on your own. Yeah, you need two two pieces, ideally three of the rest. Need everybody working together. When commentators factor in all that matters, cameramen, all, all of it. You need everybody working together. You 100% need your opponent. You came across a dick that didn't want to work with you. That's all. Uh, this is a problem I've been, been running into. Um, I know you're really good at it, but how do you, what are some things that you do that uh, to make it so that more menacing and stalking than like looking like you're waiting. Oh, it's body and facials and stuff. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, it's it, a big part for me when I'm putting heat on too is I genuinely do look for open. You hear people say like, look for what they're giving you and stuff. But you, not just like if this was a real fight, yes, you'd be trying to find the right open and show. But outside of that, Treating this as exactly what it is, pro wrestling. That's what that makes sense. You're looking for the easiest target. So I know that like, like there's an example in your match that jumped out um, and you gave her uh, she sold in the corner, you gave her a couple of kicks to the stomach before she had really turned around. Oh I think you kicked her arm, but you gave the kicks as if you were kicking the stomach. Like instead of giving like the side like arm kick type of thing, like you gave her like push kicks, you know? And it, it wasn't there, just, but whether you preconceived thought it or in the moment, whatever, it's like you wanted to make something be there that wasn't there. Kick the arm, kick the arm, kick the arm. Uh, but it wasn't there. So maybe, yeah, and you don't, every piece of offense doesn't have to be to that arm. So maybe it could have been because she was standing on one of those, a kick to the gut, and then kick the arm. You know, it's fine. But it's like, it's watching, looking for your opening, because if you're, you're attentively focused on like, 
I'm, I'm really looking for that, and I'm waiting for that opportunity. I don't want to advance until I know, like, especially if I'm just advancing with a strike. I don't want to advance with something until like I'm 100% sure I'm gonna make it look good. You know? So if, if, if you're selling down and stuff, and I'm playing, looking, like there's a different, like I'm not just gonna be, I'm just I'm playing. I'm, just, I'm looking for, for what it is. And I'm, I'm just casually moving, you know. And just it's like it's like Gordon is the best at it. Like the prey and the victim. You can take what he does for his final moments, and you can you can use it to a lesser extent. You can't make it as dramatic when you're just doing it in the heat and stuff. But you use that same flip over mentality that he does. And that's exactly what you do. Just like look, and like you can even change your eyes like when you finally cut. Kind of, and then you attack. And it's so subtle. It's nothing, you know. All this nothing has become something. And it's, like it's what separates you from, like, like, why? Why are the best strikers the best strikers? Is Hero the best striker because he slaps his leg louder than everybody else? Hell no. He puts it in the right places. He makes sure that it's in moments where it's going to be sold. Where the slaps and the big ones are, he killed them. He cuts them off. False finishes. Doesn't just throw it away. And the throwaway stuff is throwaway stuff. The stuff he's comfortable throwing away. It's this. I'm okay throwing that away. I'm okay throwing away like a kick to your, a kick to your ankles or like your foot stand. I'm stomping that. I'll throw those away where like I don't need to sell in the moment. But like those ones that matter, don't throw them away. So when you're doing your, your stuff. And then the other problem that happens a lot that can affect it is like the baby face just not, not whether they get sell, but they just keep trying to get to their feet. Uh, that was gonna be another part of my question was, because I'm a bigger guy, like mm -hmm. um, sometimes I have a problem with like the baby face, and, just, yeah, and I'm just like, okay, well, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. uh, they won't fight back, and I'm just like, even if you tell them to fight back, it's just like so minimal, and it's like, why would I sell like a tap to the gut or something like that? Like, I mean, talking in the ring will help that, but talking before you, like, it's weird how many t things in wrestling, like guys aren't just don't they don't convey messages, and it's weird because I don't get it. Like I don't, I don't get. It. And I guess I'm lucky for that part. I don't get intimidated. By it. I don't care. I just like it's not because I don't care because I don't like that's not the right word for it. I just I'm not playing that. I'm not doing it. Like if you got a problem with me, fucking take care. Of it. <coughs> Otherwise, shut the fuck up. We're doing this together. This is our work. Like that, and that's all it is, you know. And I think I think that's important. Like it helps. So it's like it's okay. I, I feel completely comfortable. Me and you are working a match, and we're calling it and stuff. And you're like, hey, uh, it, it's all the approach. Hey man, what, like one of my weaknesses is when when my baby dies on me a little, or especially too early. Like let let's call a couple of life life spots for you to make sure that we keep you alive. And maybe you get like for the, say you're working me. My response to that will most likely be like, I'll keep myself alive, don't worry. And, but you can tell. You can tell by the delivery if the person's truthful. You know, you can tell. And then it's like, oh, great. But you, then you get the other ones like, oh, okay, yeah, I get this idea, whatever. And now you guys, again, it opens up. It's so beautiful calling men. My favorite part of wrestling is calling men. I fucking love it. I don't want to do it, never. I finished calling it, and no kidding, never never once have I gone up the curtain and excited to wrestling. I've always been like, I don't want to take this bump or that bump or like, my body hurts, I'm like older and stuff now, like I just don't. But I love calling it. And, but that's why I think I love calling it, because I, I like to like, call, like, I, it's not that I call everything, like from start to finish, I don't. I just like to like, analyze some stuff. Or, like, I like that, that open play of like, just throwing shit, and seeing, most of my matches, a few minutes into calling it, Really too much, but we strip so much down that by the end of it, it was so low. It's important, you know. It's important to throw as much at the wall as you can, but be smart enough to strip stuff down. So it's just, when you're calling it, it's another element to calling it of like, like, hey, I like to call my heats and thing, but one of the problems I'm having is like, is, is the cell. And then it's also you knowing like you're not going to give them the sidewalk on the apron as the cutoff because you don't want him to die that way. So you're just gonna give him the backbreaker, and you're just gonna you're just gonna work. Uh, can't work, not not even plus the knee in the back, and, you know, working up on the chin. You're, just, you're gonna work stuff that don't call for somebody to sell it. Shit, ton. 
And that was like I said, uh, some we did, we did like the bigger, right? The bigger movie. You give you give them stuff so they can sell a point of view. But just just have that conversation, you know. And if you don't get a chance to, and you're gonna go out there and work, you try your best to just continuously put them in positions to fire back, or you call elongated spots instead. Like when you have them in the hole, instead of it being a couple elbows to the gut, take off, duck one, sunset flip. It's duck one, sunset flip move away on the punch, sell up to a corner, I'm gonna charge, put up a boot, pop up to the second, I'm gonna charge you again, jump over me, roll away, charge back in, take my back. You've given them this. They've, now they just have to put it to use. And I, like, I'm okay calling long spots in the ring like that. Um, I just don't worry about calling them all at once. Like I might have you in the corner, and while you're in the corner, and I'm giving, putting boots to you or whatever, I may say to you, a couple shots, take off, so I said, play. And then, you're probably thinking that's where we're going. You're going to sell the rope, and I'll take you on snap me down and grab a hold up. After sunset, flip, like, miss a punch, sell the corner, I'm going to charge, put it through. Now we work up from the hole, and come back down after that. I'm going to charge you again, hop over me, go away, down. You got it all? No, I don't have any of it. Okay, no problem. Off the ropes, take it back, elbow, boom, in, kick out, hold. All right, repeat it from start to finish. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Great, good one. Then you broke it up for it. I'm not going to fucking rush you. I'm not going to rush you. This is my time. Yeah, you just you're moving, you're moving, and you're working around, and you don't have to call the spot at one time. That's a big mistake a lot of people have. You don't have to. You're working, and if you're in a hole and you're trying to call the whole spot, and it's just not happening, and you feel like, oh, this is getting to that point, what kind of fuck will work out? Shake hand him out of the ring. Give some of the spot to the ref. Tell the ref to go check on him. Ref goes up to check on him. Blah, 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 blah. No one's looking for that. Dude finally gets back in the ring. Ref comes to you, but he still doesn't have it. No problem, at least we had all that shit that we just did there, and now people are, as soon as he gets back in, I'm fucking on him, on him, on him. I pull him out of him, and he kicks out. I grab him, I repeat it to him. Usually by the third time something or something, I realize that they just did. So I hold him in, he didn't have it, we shake the hand. Ref hold him in, he comes back in, still doesn't quite have it. Get him, I'll have it now. But once I say it, he did. That helps. I suppose that three times in a row, in the same movement, without doing it too much, even working the whole, it is. Let's say you have like a three minute deep spot, um, like when me and James match for something. Um, and I know what you were saying about grabbing colds more. Um, is there a spot within the heat particularly that you would recommend using a hold for versus not, or vice versa? Like in like shorter like, in shorter scenarios like that? Yeah, <coughs> like you have some time to you want to do with the hold or something versus you know choking and all that stuff and stuff. So, like, so without ha without calling like a match, just thinking like a general answer. I would think my cutoff would most likely be something, even if that specific cutoff wasn't, I would, I would definitely get to a body part if it was such a short heat. i get to a body part and I'd wait till I did a little bit of damage to it to then try to wear it down with the hold. Do you think why you're doing the hold? It's hard to put a hold on a fresh body part and expect it to come up with a victorious outcome. It's not so unsensible to I've done a little bit of damage on his ankle, his knee, his elbow, his wrist, his shoulder, and I'm gonna now wear that down, attack it. Because at that point, commentary-wise, uh, it's not even, I'm trying to think, I just watched something that was older, I think it was Ventura on commentary, that was kind of explaining, and he was like, whatever it was, he was essentially explaining like, that he wasn't trying to win with the top wrist slot, he was just trying to wear his opponent down. You're just trying to set him up and soften him up for later. And that's like, with really good commentaries and doing a good job in the ring, that's all going to come across. So it's hard for them to say that if you didn't do anything to that arm, and you just grabbed the hole. It's that, that feels more shame wrestling. So I think for me, I would, I would stop them and, and make sure that the, the crowd felt that I was focused on something, that, that something was in danger of being injured, and then I would, I would okay. parlay into that. And then you can go back to as many times as you want. As far as the first grab, I think it's hard. Okay, so as opposed to like just hitting a cutoff and then just wrenching his neck or his arm or working with his arm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't, hit that part I don't like that as much. Like, every match is different. Some matches have to be activated because maybe 
you heated up a shine that was real wild where he really got moving and his shine almost felt like a comeback. It was just whoa, whoa, whoa. And finally somehow, you know, he he caught him with a, a, a nice clothesline or a stunt you guys got. Maybe it was that, like maybe he charged you, but you lift him up and shotgun over the top rope and grab him in his throat. And maybe there you do grab the hole because the idea is like he was rocking and rolling, he was all over the world, blah blah blah, but you finally got the son of a bitch grounded, you're gonna oh you wanna keep him down. You want to make sure he's not in the movie. You're going to suffocate him a little bit. You're going to take the pace of this match back down. You want it back into your control. Then, yeah, that's going to work. So it's, it's really per match. Okay. But like the, gen the general pacing of matches and how they come across, usually the shine is. I've noticed shines are much more subtle lately, you know, where we, we really do focus on the back end. And in that sense, like, yeah, I feel like it's put the exclamation point on, stop them. Show that you're over him. You want that. You always want that visual of you standing tall and doing that. It's amazing without words how much that sets to people. So create that visual once or twice, okay. and then and then come back to his level. The second you're back into that hole, it it's not as clear. It, it, it's a, in a weird way, you know. It's not as clear that there's something about someone standing over you that like makes it very clear. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. But it's awesome. perfect. Dip in, 
And most times you don't. I mean, tens or whatever. You just want this. And that, I think that's a mistake a lot of us make. It's like we try to like get this thing. Why? Like, save that for the really long matches, the really important matches, the matches that already are special. So, for instance, me and you have been working on a program for four months and we're having a bit of a blow off or something, and people look forward to it. That's what we'll say that because we know we've already got a hook. They're already uh, uh, investing in us. So we're going to probably be able to carry them that fresh matchup first time we ever worked each other in front of this crowd. Why? Like, why are we going to make our lives and job harder? Like, just do this with them. <coughs> just do that. Most likely we're going to flop something anyways and they're going to dip a little. But let's try to get. So, like, for you, it's like, oh, I, I, I know that. I know I get these three cool things and I know that they grow in reaction this way. And if she has a couple of cool ones, where, where it's really good for you too, especially as a heel, as a heel, find out like what bumps you know you take well, or what sequences you do well for when you're wrestling the baby face who doesn't have a lot of material. Like I'll give you a perfect example. I worked Pentagon two days ago. Uh, Pentagon has more moves. Pentagon surprisingly doesn't. I, I shouldn't say it. Pentagon does nothing that I do know. But Pentagon's nothing is way more spectacular. <laughs> uh, so he had a couple of nothings that were like, to me, like, well, that's, I'm not doing anything better than that. But he he has a spot where he takes a Canadian destroyer out of it. I've never given one in my life. And he was just like, he made me feel so confident. i like, this is, this is going to be great. It's going you know, to be awesome. And it was amazing. And it was like a perfect example of he was more uh, in the setting. He was a little bit more of a deal in it. He knew I'm gonna hit this amazing thing on him. He's gonna kick out, and if his next thing on me is not impressive, they're probably gonna be like, "Well, that guy is cooler." You know, he's already got the cool mask and stuff. He's just, he's just like him more. But he has this awesome sequence where you hit a Canadian destroyer, and the, the crowd doesn't know it's him doing all the work and him taking it, and I get the adulation for it. So it's really, I think it'd be good for you to first understand your move set and, and how your moves grow in crowd reaction. And it's great to have a baby face who has a little bit of content that they can put into it, but also come up with a couple of things that you can set up for, but miss that lead right into something. Like, I'm going to set you up, climb the second Yoko drop. You're going to lead Yoko drop. But not only are you going to roll out of Yoko drop, it's going to lead right into like, like you climbing up to the top rope and double kneeing me and I'm gonna ride down that bump and it's gonna look beautiful like and you know and something like that. Because you're just figuring out like like I can give this person two two fucking big pops that they otherwise wouldn't get. They're probably not gonna get them. That's really good. Like uh big faces love those like he knows that can do that. Like I I have a couple like real simple things. I, I can take a gut buster really well. Like it's like I can't I will not let you back body drop. I have no body control that scares the hell out of me. I don't take it well. So I just explain to the person, like, I'm either going to make that look shitty, man, I'm not even taking it because it's, like, it's the most dangerous bump in me because I suck at it. Or you can flapjack me and I can get up really high for you and take it on my belly and it would be great. Or I can take a, a the, the code breaker or something like that. So you just know I, I have these, these things I do that, while on paper may sound like, eh, but I do it so well that it's going to get this crazy reaction, like uh, more being a Hanson uh, for a Ring of Honor and a bit, little bit of a bigger guy, and he kind of, I think he runs into that a little bit because he can do some cool stuff, and then it's like, well, what's the baby going to do? And one of his cool things is that he fucking can miss a suicide dive and eat, eat the foreign guardrail and do it <coughs> safely, but looks crazy. And how awesome is it? Like, so for me, I don't die, but when we work each other, he can eat that, I can get out of the way of it, I can pull myself up on the apron and I can sure as hell run off the apron with a jumping knee. That jumping knee only becomes so awesome and impressive because I rode the pop of the misstep. And so it's like you, you, you just set it up, it's just, it's just you setting it up. And you, so you start, start to like have your own material of like, I know these get this reaction and I know if I miss this, I know that it's gonna, it's gonna create the rattle effect. And then as long as you hit a home run after that, like, and that home run could literally just be a head kick. Anything, you know, and that, that's when you start to take what they do and go, like, well, What can you do here that you know? And I hit a distance for him, that's really good. Damn, that's the thing, you know. Uh, and then the first part for the cheating thing, uh, so like my favorite thing to watch right now, 
Uh, uh, well, I watch a lot of tag shit now, but like my, for just personal preference, uh, Eddie Guerrero's 95, 6, 7, I would say, uh, he'll run uh, with the Cruiserweight division for uh, MCW. Uh, his heel work is insane. Uh, and he does, he does like exactly that. And I, I've actually been thinking about it a lot lately. Like, Man, the second I get to be a heel, I can't wait. Because I want to be the heel that that is in your face until you step up to him. And then he's a little timid, like, because Eddie would do it so well. I want to be the heel that will take powder and not be nervous to, like, not be cool or be a coward or whatever. Uh, he does this one thing, and it's just marvelous. And like, I mean, I, I think my my version would be with my beard, but he would do it with the, the bullet here, the idea where like instead of it just being like a lock up, like it was a lock up arm grab, uh, he took the arm grab, and instead of him just being like, come on, grab, blow my ear, you know, he, he would start it with with that, but didn't just see it kind of thing, and then he would like. <laughs> You know, like literally, like giving himself the arm, and, and it was just so brilliant when I'm watching it. Like, how great are you? You're amazing. Like, you just, yeah. you, you, because it, it makes, it makes more sense to me because it's like, the ref said he didn't see the hair fall. Well, I'm going to visually show you how that <laughs> not only happened, but how it forced the arm drag to happen. And it was just one of those, and then like with the arm body, he did the same thing. And he pulled himself down, and it was like, <laughs> and it's like, it's a great heel thing that you can do that's like taking the thing everyone does, you know, well, no one does it now, I prefer on TV. I don't know, I don't know if that's a rule. Like, I've actually planned on asking if heels are asked not to do certain things. I haven't seen a guy pull the tights for a win. Well, for an, I shouldn't say for a win, for an attempted win. I can't remember the last time. And I don't get that. Like, I feel like that's the thing to do. Like, have that moment in the match. Where you pulling the tights on a schoolboy and the kick out is meaningful because you pulled the tights and the ref didn't see it. Have that moment in the match where you get the pinfall and throw your foot on the rope to add, add leverage to it and the ref catches it. You know? That's heat. And it protects him and it makes it, I don't know what just about each other, but it makes them look better, you know, so you're doing him a service. You're getting heat on you, not on the ref. You're giving the baby face time while all that happens to sell and bring himself back to life and stuff. So it's like, I think that I think that is important. Like, what's what's not good to do is someone's in the corner and you go and you put your foot on their throat and the ref comes. Up. You do it once, right? one, two, three, four, and right, right, and then you do it again, and you do it again. Now it's like, well, well ref, I don't even care that that you're here. You know, I'll break before five, but. Like, I, I'm going to abuse the rules of Benton, especially. That's only fine if you're going to tell that story throughout the match with the ref. But finally, he's had enough of this shit. And he's not about to listen to me and maybe there's a shove, shove or something. That's fine. But like in general, like, like I, wouldn't, I wouldn't choke someone on the ropes. I thought what you did today was great. You put the leverage into the ribs and stuff. I like that because it's like you're using the rings for your advantage. You weren't just doing the cheap maneuvering of, of whatever. I also like it when it's like if you put a hold on someone and like if I have if I have the hold on and the ref is, is right here and it, it's it's asking, 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 and then like I turn the hold down, I rip at the face and rip at the face and rip at the face, and I grab the hold back in here and the ref's back in angle over there. You know, like that stuff is good because it's legit, it's legit heat, it's legit piece of shit. Like if you can see that happen, you can see. So you had the wherewithal to turn your back to make sure the ref didn't see, which now doesn't put any heat on the ref. All the heat's on you. The baby face has to fight. And now, and now that adds another layer to the comeback when you get to the point where the baby face is fighting back, that they can now return the favor on all that crap that we just pulled on them. So now they can pop and pop and pop and finally get you down. And before they take off or throw that arm kick, they can rip at your face and then take off. And, and like, they can, because they can get away with cheating right in front of the ref as long as it's retribution, you know? They, and I don't say that like when the ref's not gonna be, the ref will still scold them as far as the crowd is concerned. They're, they're applauding that. Yeah, good, screw her, she deserves that. You know, like her. So like, it's, I, I think it's like, it's like, it's just starting to think of like, how do, how do I cheat 
how, how do I legitimately cheat? So that the rep doesn't see it, so that the people see it, and it's kind of upset the people. Revival actually are amazing. Like they, they have it down to science right now. The field. Um, at singles, it's a little harder because you don't have that factor that player. I think managers are so supported in wrestling because of that, and it's real sad that managers aren't a thing anymore. Just like, like Paul Heyman plays an amazing role as the advocate of talking, but there's also that missing role now of the manager who is cheating and helping Bobby Heenan, you know, for all purposes, my guy has to get the win tonight. Um, on the Indies, you have a luxury where you could do that. That could be another thing that you maybe add to a layer for yourself. That's also another thing that, that could play into all the other stuff that we just talked about, where like the baby face could eventually get your manager. And that pop, no matter what, is going to be your pop. So now you've just kind of created this other pop for the baby. And it's just like, it's just something that maybe you're not all that's going to fit right away, maybe it doesn't work. But it's just cool to have all the, these back pocket ideas of like, yeah, like if, if I need this, or if I'm at the high school where the high school track coach is going to be, a, has to be a part of the show, hey, give the high school track coach to us as a manager and, and let them fucking do the with the baby face. And then they're going to turn on the baby face and they're going to get all this heel heat and the baby face is going to hit that dude and then he's going to get a great pop. And like, you know, it's, it's just good to have all these different things. Like, I, it's like having like a, a really good utility knife. You, know, you just have all these things you can do. And you're like, I can pull this out situation. And as a heel, it's, it's, it, as a heel, it's easier and more fun because you have a lot more leniency of how much you can get away with. But definitely inherited the cheetahs then. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, it's it's just I think it makes for like a more Crowd involved, fun type of match, you know. And it doesn't even always have to be cheating. You know? like, like I have something coming up that I already know. I'm going to play very baby face without us touching, and there's going to be some like posing and whatever. I'm going to play very baby face, and then I'm going to turn and attack that person and try to get a heal out of that, out of that like sucker the man attack. Uh, but with a payoff, they're like, I'm going to attack, and then they have a manager escort, whatever, I'm going to attack them. And then when I turn around, they will be back to life and put the thing on me. Like, like, I already have some of those in my head, like, because there are a couple matches that I have going on. And they might not even happen, but I like to come with, like, ideas here. So it's like, that's, that's cheating to an extent. Like, I'm, I'm jumping the bell, you know? But maybe that's the only time I'll cheat that match, you know? Maybe it won't be. Maybe there's other matches I'll shoot a bunch. I think it helps. They, I think it, unless the purpose of the match is for you as the heel to just come off like uh, Nia Jax did for a while, where she just beat the hell out of girls, uh, she probably doesn't want to shoot because she wants to wait until the girl stands up to her and starts kicking her ass to then shoot. If you're in full control, you probably don't need to do it. It's when you have that opponent who's going to put you in a little bit of a, a backpedal that. I, would bet. I think it's very good to cheat. It's very good to cheat to turn the tides. I don't think it's, it's necessary to cheat. I'm, if I'm in full control and you're selling me in the corner, I don't see any benefit in choking you or cheating. I don't. But if you're coming back a little bit and you're showing a little bit of fire, and me positioning us in a way where the ref doesn't see me grab your ear or do something a little bit shitty, I think that's really good. Cheating. Yeah, Jason. Yeah. What are some qualities that you think makes a really good referee? Uh, believability is huge. It's very similar to wrestling, you know. I think uh, Todd Sinclair for our age was amazing. Uh, anytime he scolds a guy, he believes it. Anytime the guy stands up to him, he understands. Like, it's not just, I'm the ref. It's like, he believes that. He believes, no, you son of a bitch. That I'm, this is what I'm paid to do. I'm paid to make sure you don't act like an asshole. You know? and he, he has that too. Uh, how you position for your false finishes is great for you to get your count to be over eye level for the wrestlers so that if I'm laying here, your hand is hitting here so that I, I can see that without making it obvious and looking at it. And it makes perfect sense that like you should be looking, checking your shoulders, anyways. Um, 
The positioning is important. I don't know that there's, I'm sure that the more you wrap the better, the sooner that you just learn that. But like, I, if you don't notice a ref in the ring with you, it's ideal. You, know, you don't want to be trying to do your run spot and you're just trying to avoid each other. Uh, that I would assume comes more with experience and knowing what your wrestlers, who you're in the ring with, what their tendencies are, that helps. Because if you know, oh, he does corner knees or he does this duck, 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 duck thing, then it, it's good because then you can, oh, I, you see it happening, you kind of hide off a little bit. Um, but it's, it's really presence, it's really being the authority, and not feeling foolish pretending you are, because we're all pretending, you know, so it's like, you can't, you can't make them feel like you're pretending, you have to make them feel like you're there for a reason, like a UFC official is anything, NFL, any game, they're, when they speak it matters, it's not, you know, whatever, they don't count to five, and, you know, who cares, it matters, you know. So you've got to treat this like that. Like if, if a UFC guy, the, the official sees a, a low blow or something and ducks points and then tells them to break apart, that son of a bitch isn't going to just pass by him and get on the guy. If he's scolded, he'd be fine. He'd probably the match would be called. It, the more you can keep that element in wrestling, the better. And it's really, it's not, it's very hard in this level to like do that. Like it's easy up there right now with the TV because it's like, all the agents are forcing it, so it's not like the refs have a lot of people helping create their backbone, you know? Whereas here, it's harder, like it's, you're not, especially in tags and stuff, like people are using count all the time and stuff, you just gotta do your best with it, and like, if you're, especially if you're friends with the guys, you have a little relationship, it's trying to, to talk that out with them, like, hey, like, this is gonna help all of us, the whole match, if we work together on this, so like, you're gonna come in for a tag move that you know you need more than five seconds, let me know and I, let's find a way to get me distracted, you know, like, but not, not fake, like real, distracted. come in for the tag move and come and tell this guy to get out of the ring, and then you that off him a couple seconds and now you come in and, you know, there you are. So it's, I think it's communication helps, but as far as entering, it's really confidence, it's confidence knowing your role, not being scared to play that role, uh, being firm about it, you know, uh, never trying to get over, never trying to, to steal any of the spotlight, you know, unless it's asked of you to do so in that match. Um, uh, uh, Drake does this and it's awesome. He encourages the match a lot. So this, this is personal reference. Uh, I've had a rep who I worked with and it was a, a, a double down spot. I took the bump and we were down and then I was gonna feed up with my back and kind of like, as I turned around, I would turn around and do jabs. Uh, and as I was feeding and doing the thing, the ref said, not now, not now, go get turn. And I fucking hated it. Like, I want to feel what I'm doing. I can't handle you telling me. You're not watching him and telling, no, I'm gonna feel it. And if my, my Feeling is a half second off one way or the other, ain't gonna kill anything. But just please shut the fuck up. Like don't tell me. And just because it takes me out of the match a little bit, like it, it, it just it, it hurts my emotion to it. Now taking the other side of that, uh, Drake, you'll hit a double down, pin and kick out and you lay there. That was fucking awesome guy, you gotta find me you want, that's fucking the greatest thing ever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great it's a dude, I'm you would be blown away how much that helps you as a wrestler. And it's, he doesn't do it all match, he just does it a few times. And it's always genuine, it's always real. And it's just, I don't know, like you, like one time, I, specifically the first time he did it to me, we were in a match with whatever, you know, and he got a great sell, I loved it, it was so good. And it literally, my confidence, like I felt, it, like I was like, yeah, that was fucking good. And this, this is going better than I thought it was. And like, I'm not, it was crazy. Uh, he does that, and then like you're real good at like uh, I don't know if it plays in so much here, but like, like hey, hey, turn hard cam, hard cam left. And it doesn't even have to be turn hard cam, but maybe just let, uh, having like giving them that insight if they're in a hold or something, like people to your left, people to your right, whatever. Like but maybe they can position that, uh, or like he, another thing, and just another trick that he does, is, like you'll be in the hold or whatever, and he'll be like, all right, guys, you're doing great. Work that hold, breathe. Work that hold. Keep moving. Take your breath. This is your 
time kind of thing. Uh, or like we had a huge fire up spot with dives and stuff, and then uh, after it, like he, as he backed uh, us to the corner, he was like, all right, this is the time to make sure you breathe, make sure you breathe, and keep the nose up in the mouth. And it's, it's not, it, it, it's, it's definitely delivery is important, because he does it in a way where you never want to be like, shut up. Sure. Like, don't tell me to breathe. Yeah, it's very encouraging, isn't it? It's so optimistic, and so like, uh, so that, that is, the delivery of it is important, and not overdoing it, but like, the encouragement is, is a good thing, you know, uh, and I never even would have thought of it. I've never had it 10 years, never once did somebody do it other than him doing it. Um, so that, that is a good thing to have. I'm trying to think of other qualities that refs have had. The thing I like about Fabian's most is just that when he takes his bump, eats it, and makes it look amazing, and sells it, and doesn't even remotely come back to life, you know, or if he has to come back to life, he always registers what just happened. Uh, and his emotion is amazing, too, on how he sells the two count, uh, or anything, any pinfall, any submit, he sells it so well. Uh, count outs, or throwing somebody out, you ever watch some of his stuff or like a throw true cartoon out or something? It's you always get to step out through the ring ropes. You, you, no more. Both of you. It, it, it's just like wrestling where it's not you, you both out. It's you so slow it is. It's strike. Strike. Everybody register this. Where's the fucking pop? And it's there's an art to it, man. It really, just like there's an art to what we do. Uh, and I, if I, he's a guy I would 100%, I don't know if they, their TV is on out here, but he's a guy I would just sort of watch him. Uh, I'm sure TV reps are all really good, I'm sure they are. Uh, from who I work with, though, Pants is amazing. Uh, I'm talking about him. Um, uh, Bennett is amazing, he was down in uh, Florida. And Drake is really, really good. And not and it's not to say any of the others aren't you know, but it's just like for wrestling, you get to pick up a few to watch. You get a few, of course. I would pick those three guys are really good. And it's just that, that believability and that emotion, that, the emotion that, that Todd uses is like really off the charts. Like, you know, I've had a few times where we got to actually do a couple of uh, physical interactions together too, and like, it's just always, it's always there. It's always in it. So, Um, is there any advice uh, for when you're working TV so you have to work the hard cam, uh, like to still engage the crowd behind you? Yeah, so this, I just literally just got this two weeks ago, uh, first time I ever heard it. It was a regal thing. Uh, so you have a two seg TV match, a three up commercial, three down seg. Uh, his big thing was, so you, you really got to, I guess there's two trains of thought. The, the normal train of thought is you really got to work the hard time. That That's where all the people are. You got 500 here, but you got millions at home or whatever. So you have to work the hard um, Under that train of thought, you're working 80, 90 percent of matching the hard time. You know, commercial hits <coughs> turn your fucking back to the card cam. You worked all the line. You got about a minute or two minutes here where you can get those people invested. And it, it was the first time I ever heard it. And like an instant light bulb, and I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm gonna do that forever now. Uh, because it's it's like one of those things where it's like if you ignore them, ignore them, ignore them, it's gonna be hard to have them, but if you ignore them a bit, and then you pull them back in, give them that attention, you can them a bit, you know, especially off, off when you're off, uh, on TV anyways, and you can pander that. When you can, you can, you can, you can, anything you can gotta do to get that live crowd here in that time, get them, you know. You're not gonna pander them during TV time, you're not gonna be like, come on, but when the TV thing is off, anything, just fucking get him. Throw the dude up next to them. Chop him on the outside. Roll him right fucking back in. Grab that hole but towards them. All right, for five, four, three, turn to hard cam. You know, uh, because you can get them into the match. They'll stay with you. As long as you give them that little bit, a couple minutes, they'll stay with you the next few minutes. So that's a big piece. I mean, then there's this fucking the Stone Cold mentality who he flat out, like, I never once cared for the camera. He says that all the time. He says it on his podcast. And 
He's like, I never once played through a camera. He's like, the way I view it is we got Kevin Dunn in the truck and we got the best camera guy in the world. And they'll catch the shot. They'll be where they need to be. I'm sure, I assume at least, that if you really talked to him and sat down with him, he'd be like, yeah, I made sure when I was leaking for my own buckets and, and <coughs> he didn't pass out, I made sure my fucking face was facing hard. And I assume, I assume for him what he means, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe he really didn't give a crap. crap. But it's like the important moments he made sure mattered, but the general 80, 90% of the bad things he didn't. Um, right now, you want to go there and you want them to know this stuff. Play the hard piano the whole time you're on TV. This is important. And there's little tricks you can do, like uh, Zane will come up for his entrance, and put the one foot on the steps on the outside and give it to the people there, and then hop in and come back to work hard, you know? So he's angled in a way where hard can catch that. Roman Cam knows that he's going to be doing it so they can catch it with the people. Uh, other guys, you know, like it's as simple as like if, if hard is over there, you know, I might get up on the ring here, wipe, wipe, have that, and then come, and when I turn to them, instead of going right to them, again, give them that, and then I'm into the hard camp. And it's just subtle little stuff. It's how do you, how do you give them your attention, but you don't want them yelling at you back here, you know, you're tagging, we're, and, and the first thing is all the cars there, and you're here, and they do not want you to do this, you know, to cheer on your guy. But it's, it's again the emotion of like they're beating up my guy. So I'm giving them a side visual. Give them the same visual that hard. Get up, fight, fight, whatever. But now when I get up, I'm gonna give them that. You know, I'm gonna that here. So it's like it's just it's like it's cheating the the coaches a little bit, I guess, so that they're not gonna be like, yeah, get back to the hard game and, and be upset or anything. And they're not that like they get it's not like they're gonna scold you or anything. They don't, they just give you feedback. But uh, it's, it's just that subtlety of finding finding ways. Again, I really like it. He angled a lot. Like I like I like corners a whole lot more. Like it hard here. I don't want my offense to be this this. Like I want it angled. I want it so that they, they, they can see his face and, and they see my side profile. You know, so I'll open up my hips this way and hope that they that they sell them on there. You can't do either. So open there like here as opposed to here, you know? And so we just open up our hips to the hard cam, that will help a lot. But by doing, by opening just your hips to it, and not your body to it, you don't cut those people off, you know? That will help a lot. Circling your baby face, like, as a heel, like, you don't always want to attack from the front. The person's on their, their knees right in front of you, and then it's just like, again, that dude is like, put your fucking hands up, cover it up, what the hell are you doing? So you, like, you almost want to circle them, and, and, Try to give them hits from the side or from the back. So instead of if the hard cam again is, is here, you know, I might when I circle, like instead of going here, complete back to these people and hitting, I might just circle it and have that moment where I turn my back. But when I hit, again, I'm side profile. Like it's, it's, just, it's just keeping it, as long as you keep it, from what I've, I've experienced, keep it in mind at all times, you're probably going to do okay with it. Not every single spot or bump has to play to it, but be cognizant, especially in holes, be cognizant of it. Where like when you're calling and you've got this one spot that's going to be a rana, you think it up. Do I want Do I want to be flipping towards it and selling to the corner now where it's this shot, or does it make more sense to go that way? And I turn and it has a long shot to my face because I know the next thing is this. You should, play that stuff out, it's, it's part, it could be part of your process going into a match. Like, like it, it's one of the last pieces for me that I put in because I do still feel like performance and reaction outweighs camera shots. Um, but it, it is important, you know. And it, up there, it's great that we have hard and we have the two floors. Uh, I actually do a lot more with them as far as talking to them before the match and stuff and, and playing to them, then I do the hard because that's the close shot that you really get on your face. I think that, to me, that's much more important. Uh, like when uh, Johnny and I had our, our match versus each other, that was a huge piece of our match. Those moments where we wanted to make sure that they had anguish and, and, and selling and my emotion. And so we had really, it was really important for the kick out 
often we'd be sitting in certain, facing a certain way so that the heart turns there. I'm sitting here, this guy can zoom in on me. He can't go sell way over there because he needs this, uh, or I'm sorry, how his heart can the guy here and guy there, I think, or guy here and guy there, yeah, guy there. So this heart, this guy is shooting me. It's, it's, it's like a weird one. I want this to be close on me, but now Johnny's playing on that guy, so Johnny can't be directly across from me. Because now we're walking off both of our guys shot, so he's going to angle himself this way. So now, his, my guy shoots me, this guy shoots him, I can't grab it off. So like that that match, because that match was such an emotional story, it was very important to be like, this is okay, we're gonna use these elements. And some matches don't have that much of a story, so maybe it's just hard, hard, hard. Um, it's just being cognizant of it. Like hardly ever do you see people who you're like, God, all, the back is always in the camera. Like, I mean, maybe there's people who the, the back is to it a little bit. Between you, your opponent, and the ref, someone's always, like, and the ref specifically, is always going to have that, especially if you're getting Get back to the heart, game. get back to the heart. Game. Yeah, so, and when you have that, again, it's cheating, you know? I get someone telling me, I get someone reminding me, so it really makes it easy. It's 100% not a thing I have to stress about it, because you know? like, when you go up there, you pick up, you pick it up so fast, and the cameraman is the greatest, like, they'll, They'll talk to you, you know, early in the day during production or whatever. And they'll, hey man, for your entrance, you know, if you go a couple paces slower, a couple paces quicker, turn this way instead of this way. Like, it's all, it's never, it's just, for a Roman cam, never turn your back to like that Roman cam. Like, never be walking in a Roman cam. It's like backpedaling in front of you, you know, when you're walking. And then you kind of get, like, I mean, it's okay. You got like, like, Roots get the glorious look, so he's showing himself. But never just have that just so you can play with people. Because like now he's gonna try to circle so he can get back to your face, because that's what they want. So instead, you know, you're walking, he's backpedaling as you're walking, and you're just gonna pass by him, but you're gonna stay open to him. So now he can like circulate with you. So if I want to actually turn the body, I'll just circulate my turn and allow him to do it with me. I won't like I won't do a tight turn, you know. Kind of like, like think of it like you're feeding sometimes in the rain. Sometimes you can get a bigger feed. Same idea. It's really, it's really easy stuff. Yeah. 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 I just want to point out what you said makes complete sense where you have to uh, talk with the cameraman as yeah. to what you want to do. Uh, I mean, it helps us out. Uh, when we try to put on good production, when we want to produce quality stuff, uh, it helps to get that feedback. Yeah, yeah, all, all the, commu the communication is huge. Uh, everyone's a part of the team, you know, from talking with your producer, your agent, your promoter, you can't have everybody. You know, it's the more people you can get included in, it's a complete package for sure. Where are we on time? Uh, we're at 215. Oh, anything else you guys want to hit on? No? Okay, so one other thing that I'll, I'll hit on, because uh, I like to finish every uh, camp with it. So like, when I came up in wrestling, it was really expressed to us, like, uh, one body of one name. And I'm sure I went through a lot of phases of that, of like, oh, that's old man coach talking, or yeah, whatever. You know, I, I'm sure I had bad attitude moments, good attitude moments, and so on. Like, the importance to that less is more. All, all the different advice that feels more, uh, I guess there's, there's a lot of broad advice that doesn't feel like it pertains to you specifically, you. It's like, oh yeah, he just says that to everybody. Until like, I don't know when it was over the last few years, but I, I, like I really got thinking about the one body, one mind thing. And like, I think it's important to understand. Like it's important to understand like, like especially the one body part, both of them. The one body part, it's just, like, you can feel great when you start out in wrestling. You're pretty young. For guys, your testosterone rates are high. And for girls, you're far from, you know, hopefully far from, like, hot flashes or fucking having kids or having that throw off your, like, because all that stuff is very hormonal, you know. But when you, when you start out most likely, you feel pretty good. You, know, you feel pretty froggy. You might have had a couple banged up injuries from, from high school or whatever, but you feel good. So sometimes you're bumping your butt off and you're working your ass off every night. And when someone says, hey, maybe do less, or hey, 
maybe don't do that. Um, it's like, well, what's he not? I feel fine. What's he talking about? Well, because eventually you don't, you know, every bump eventually rattles you. Like, that's why, like, I, I wasn't kidding when I said I like calling a match. I don't like doing it. Like, I feel like I get a pretty good pain threshold and, like, toughness to me and stuff. But it doesn't mean I enjoy it. Like, I don't want to feel that. I don't, like, the idea of hitting the rope right now and taking the bump, like, print, makes me cringe. I'm just like, oh, that's <laughs> it is. Trust me, it's true. Especially maybe newer, you don't feel. I didn't feel that when I was newer. It was a mile a minute. Uh, but, like keep that in mind. Like and keep in mind for like offense too. Like you'll hear like uh, like Foley's do the cactus elbow off the apron to the floor, or, or like someone did today the drop the missile drop kick with the back bump. I personally do not have an offensive maneuver that hurts me. Like. Do I bump on a couple of them? Yes, but I don't have anything. I, my offense is not going to require me to jump off the top rope and hit a missed drop kick in every single comeback that I do. Because now you guys start thinking, maybe right now you're working on two shows a week, eventually three or four, eventually maybe even up to five. That bump every night catches up. And it catches up faster than, than bumping feeds do and stuff because it's like it's a very repetitive same motion thing. It's a bigger fall. Like I do, I do one thing off the top or off the second, where I do like a couple of cross thing, and I only pull it out it's like very seldom. For a while, I didn't. I was an idiot. I do it all the time. Very seldom do I pull that stuff out now, because you got to be mindful of that, like apron bumps and stuff. Like that. It doesn't have to be like you don't need the holy shit for the while. You know, if you build your match for emotion. You actually might get a holy shit or a wow out of, out of the, like a minuscule spot because they're so invested in the match as opposed to trying to get the shock back. There are times you're going to want to pull that up. There's times you, you know, you're going to want to up the game or whatever. Be like real cautious and mindful and like, think of the move set, think of what you're going to take. Like, I, I'm straightforward people. Like, if, they, if you do a brain buster, I'm very adamant and very like forward about, hey man, you can hook me up here, you can pause me, and when we go down, throw my goddamn legs and flat ball. You know, uh, Cedric is a really good example. I have Alexander. We're really good buddies. And when I said that to him, he was like, oh yeah, yeah, man, it'll be fine. And I was like, no, like my buddy, you know. So I was like, no, listen, seriously, you are way more explosive than I am. You are gonna go from point A to point B faster time than I could ever fathom going. I can't, literally can't throw my legs down to bump flat as fast as you can spike yourself. So you have to, you have to throw my legs forward. You have to assist me. And by, by taking it that extra step, it made him go, oh, like, he's not just giving me the light. Oh yeah, hey, hey, try not to kill me on the screen buster. He's, like, I gave him exactly how I wanted him to do it, you know? And I, I don't know, like, we didn't have a conversation about it. But I assume it was that extra step made him go like, oh, don't worry, man. I'll take care of my problems. You know, and you need that. You need that. You need that like assurance going up. So I'll take it. I'll take that. I'll hook me up. Pause. Snap it. Essentially, we're just doing a suplex. They don't fucking know. That's the point. That's my point. They don't know. They'll never know. They'll never fathom knowing. They have no clue. They don't understand how much it hurts to take a brain buster on the top of your head. So fuck. Why do it? <laughs> Seriously. They understand what it's like to be punched in the face or in the gut. They can, ooh, they can, ah. All they can do for the big crazy stuff that's really risky is the plot. They can't actually like, feel it, you know? They can't, they can't relate to it. Take that back bump and grab the head because that's what they think they saw. You don't grab the lower back because that's not what they saw. They didn't watch from the lower back. They watched your head with watch. That's what they watch. It doesn't matter if you tell them and explain to them. No, I tuck my chin. Trust me, it's a flat back bump. I don't even feel it. Doesn't matter. That's not what they saw. So, like, I keep, like, I'm very adamant. I don't take back bodies, drops. I don't take the, the, the if I'm taking a German, uh, I'd like to, if I can, and now with YouTube on the phone, it's really easy. Uh, like, if we've never worked and you, you a German's one of your things, uh, we'll probably call it. I'll walk away. I'll probably hold you up on YouTube and watch how you do a German suplex. Uh, and if I see you're like a low hip guy, you put me flat and you bridge, no problem. Great, because you're working with me. But if, if you're dumping me in my head, no. 
Like I never ever would want to be put in a position to work with like Brock Lesnar just because I don't even view him as unsafe. I really don't. Just because that those bumps hurt me. Other people can take them. I remember when he worked Kofi and Kofi took them and I was like, how are you alive? But like I, I don't know, maybe it's okay for him. Maybe his body bends that way better. I don't know. For me it hurt it, 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 it like it, it goes beyond hurting where I feel like it risks my life. It risks like my career, my ability to go out there the next few nights and perform. Uh, that that factors into my entire life, like my income and everything. Like I want to be able to wake up and hang out with my wife the next day. I don't want it to be like this thing where I'm laid up. I don't, you know? And it's just being upfront, being honest about that stuff, and being very cognizant of it. Know what bumps you're gonna take and know which ones you're not gonna take. And don't be scared of the ones that you're not gonna take it. And like in the beginning, of course, it's practice and practice and practice. There's a few you're gonna realize. You just don't take that bump. I just don't feel good about it. Just don't take it, you know? There's a hundred other ways. If you're working an opponent who insists, like, that's their, that's their own issue, you know? And everybody should realize that there's a bunch of movies in So keep that in mind. Keep in mind the body. And that goes to like, it goes outside of wrestling too. And again, it's like everybody makes their own choices, but like what drugs you take, what drugs you choose to, to not take, whether they're to help you sleep or wake up or give you energy on the road or, or their muscular performance or whatever it is, like just keep in mind now that even though you can potentially take some some different steroids and stuff and have a really good look to you and feel like Superman, feel great or whatever it be, that nine, nine times out of ten, maybe eight times out of ten, whatever, it, it could have long-term effects that you never think of right now. Like, you aren't thinking right right now, of, of you, both of you, for example, you're both young guys, a little bit thinner. Oh, shit, I took this one one cycle of it, and I nearly took it, and I came 10 pounds. I felt great. I, I didn't have no, I didn't have any, any negative effects. None. No side effects. None. I felt great. That's great. Don't worry about it. And now you took the next one, and maybe a little while later, you took another one. And then maybe 10 years from now, you go and you're like, how come we're not pregnant yet? And, oh, wait, what happened? Like, I, how? Oh, you were, you were injecting yourself with tests and the body stopped producing the body. So, and now the test that is producing, because your testicles were affected, it's, you can't have a cancer. Oh. That doesn't seem like it's worth 10 pounds. I guess I should have just worked harder in the gym and I didn't figure that out. That's real. It's fucking real life. I've seen it. Like, I have a lot of, like, I've been around 10, 10, 12 years, enough to see not just my group and generation, but the one above me, to see the deaths. And I, I just lost a friend two weeks ago. Uh, and it, it's real. It's all so real. And it's like, I don't mean to bring anyone down or anything. It's just keep it in mind. But keep in mind how you treat yourself. How do you tan yourself? Oh, because you get skin cancer, and it fucking changes your world. You know, all that. No one talked to me about any of this. They always just said, you got one mind, you got one body, you got one body, you're, you're, you're doing stupid bumps. But no one, like, talked to me about it. It was just like, like, I get to this point now where I'm like, I have a lot of shitty, like, banged up injuries and stuff that, that I know eventually will have to be worked on. It's just like, you know, how much of that would have happened? Like, there's a difference in working hard and smart. And that, that's just about training, too. Like, you don't need to do, you don't need to be in the 500 in your squat or a mile and then you can work in this kind of, Like, there are sessions that should be hard as shit when you sweat the balls. And you feel like, especially early on, when you feel like they're, they're just testing you. They want to see if I quit. Because you're probably right. That's probably what they're doing. And they should. They should happen. But there is going to come a point where you're going to get a lot more benefit of a lot less bump, 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 bump. You're going to learn more by watching some tape with someone. Not just watching tape. You know that I started studying tape. So I watched tape and I fell asleep to some of it. And sometimes I just enjoyed a match. And then how do you study tape when you are when you don't know how you're watching with somebody more experienced than you do? Ask them what they see, what they're picking up. Like that's how you can learn from that and save your body a little bit. You can go to the gym and learn how to how to train in, in 45 minutes in a good circuit. You can you can start having people teach you like what proper volume is. Like you hit one 12 set sets on a body part, you're most likely overdoing it. 
And if a magazine tells you differently, it's most likely because the person on the cover of the magazine who does that is taking a lot of substances to help them do that and recover from it. it it's the same as all the other stuff I've seen. So you worry about you. You handle you. You don't, like, you can get advice and take it from other people. At the end of the day, test it on yourself and know what works for you and what doesn't work. It's really important. I know the one main thing, like, uh, that was another thing our coach always threw at us, and I didn't quite comprehend it, but, like, it's, it's essentially like it's your reputation. It's not just that like, you can change your wrestling name all you want. You are who you are. Like, I am Tommaso Whitney. That's who I am. Like, I changed my looks a hundred times, and I changed my persona quite a few times. But at the end of the day, if we all work together today, and we, you all have this experience with me, this is the experience you had with me. That's, that's what it is. So now, six months from now, or a year, or two years from now, when you guys are, are, are about to break out, or you already have broken out, and somebody says, hey, how was your experience with so-and-so? You're either, it was either positive or it was negative. You know? And the more negatives that you build up, the more your name is tarnished. You know? And you can always come back from it. You can always get a second chance, uh, whether it's a second chance with the same company or a different company. You can always reinvent yourself. But it's very good to be mindful of like, maybe staying out of like certain neighborhoods means you're less likely to get into problems criminally. Maybe not hanging around in certain crowds means that keeping a clear criminal record in, in a world that we live in today with how dangerous it is, plus how much wrestling is publicly traded, publicly viewed and everything. Social media time, everything's on the internet so quick. People are gonna find out, you know. And you should never you should never do something that you're, you're doubting that you should you should I or should I not if, if, if I'm gonna tweet this but maybe should I not tweet it? Well the answer is then don't tweet it. Like your numbers on your Twitter aren't gonna they're not worth it, you know, it's not worth an extra couple of retweets. It's the same with everything. It's like how you act. Like it's be a good, kind person. Like you don't have to kiss ass at all. You don't. Like I don't I don't ever, like, you know, I never do, I never have, I never will. It's not in my nature, but I hundred percent will respect you. I will look you in the eye, I will shake your hand, I will take time to talk to you from fan to wrestler, whoever in between. I won't turn down a photo. I won't like. I will It's just. There's, I have. I have a very certain like way. I like to go about my business, and this is how. I, for me, I feel like this is how we should work toward. And everyone's a little bit different, but at the end of the day, everybody should hopefully have like. I want that them to be thinking like good things of me. I, I want, and I'm not pretending so that hopefully they think that and then go tell somebody, oh, that got me in. It's genuinely just like, that's what you should be shooting for, you know? We don't need dickheads in this business. We got enough shit in the world, and we don't need it. You step through the doors here or anywhere else, you step into a ring, you respect the ring, you wear boots, you wear wrestling shoes, you wipe your feet. Like, it's the way it should be done. And you don't have to respect the business so much so that, you don't, you don't, don't be a guy who tells everybody how much they respect the business. That's usually like step one to realize that you ask for doesn't really respect the business. Just respect the business. Just respect, just respect each other. You know, we know who the assholes are in the room. As far as I know, there's none in this room, but in general there always is one or two, you know. Uh, so it, like there's two sides of the fence to be on. Be on the right side. When it comes to your body, when it comes to outside, it's drug use, when it comes to everything. Like who you are is way more important. You want to be the biggest dick ever in the ring. You want to get the best work in the ball time to go for it. But don't let that transfer to translate to the ball style. Ever. Ever. There's no reason for that to happen. So, uh, that's something I just always like to touch upon. Think on that. Unless some of you guys have any questions, you're okay with that. Good? Hey guys, before we end it, can we get a quick picture of everybody in class? Then we get like seven guys standing, seven guys on the knee in the ring, and then everybody else sitting down. Come on, big pros. Jump on up, jump on up. There's no room. Uh, just have guys stand for, uh, on a knee in front of you guys. Everybody, everybody, man. Oh, yeah. There we go, good, there we go, good. <laughs>
One, two, and... All right, how about a, a wild picture? One, two, and... All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.